Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a short description about the Studio software. I'm gonna, you know, describe the menus a little bit. It is just a quick introduction and about the suitable inversion, a suitable selection of inverter parameters, which is essential to have a realistic model. I will talk in another session. So this video will just be an introduction to the software. And uh, so uh, let's start. In the file menu, you can import your uh, data. There are options to import data from the output of the instruments directly, like IRIS, ABM instruments, Syntrax, and uh, other types. But I usually prefer to pre-process the data and then import the data in the rest of the EMO, uh, EMO software. So it all depends on you. And there are other options like writing up the position of electrodes. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them uh, right now. In the edit menu, we have the capability to extermine bad data points and remove them before uh, trying the inversion. It's not usually very effective, especially if you're having a lot of data sets and a lot of data points. Uh, but you know, the splicing large data sets would be very amazing. If you're dealing with very uh, large or um, you know very high distances in your profile and a lot of data points that can take a lot of time for inversion, so not nothing very specific in here. In the change setting menu, we have inversion damping parameters about the damping factor, initial damping factor, the changing of the damping factor. For example, we can optimize damping factor with the L curve uh, method, which is described in the uh, Luke course tutorials, which is available on jotomosoft.com. I have uh, um, actually uh, described uh, where you can find that uh, in one of my previous videos. So we can limit the range of the model of uh, resistivity model. And also, we can uh, input a, a flatness ratio, you know, the ratio between vertical or horizontal uh, variations of the resistivity. The mesh parameters uh, and inversion progress and where the inversion must be stopped, what the convergence limit, RMS convergence limits, the number of maximum iteration, the default uh, maximum number of iterations, and other uh, parameters can be changed in here. The display section is not very important, but in here we have cutoff factor for, in fact, uh, which uh, is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, removing suspicious data points uh, when you're just importing your file. It is, I'm working with version 3.49e. So uh, in your new versions, you might have uh, you know other kind of classifications. So uh, the only thing you can do is to go for the manual of the software, which is very really amazing, and I usually use it a lot myself. The inversion is all about uh, you know model discretization, the inversion methods. You can use L1 uh, or L2 norm methods, and uh, you can. Combined inversion methods can be used also uh, in the model discretization, which is really important and can pro cause a lot of problems if you are not doing it really good. You can actually, uh, I'm going to display my model. This is my model and this is the primary discretization of the cells and this is the location of the data points can be seen. So if I'm not happy with that, I can change them appropriately to create a uh, model with uh, you know suitable resistivity, suitable sensitivity of the blocks because the sensitivity if we are dealing with surface uh, measurements, which is usually the case, the uh, uh, cumulative sensitivity of the uh, block blocks should decrease uh, towards depth. So any kind of uh, you know. Uh, erratic variations in the sensitivity can cause a lot of problems and it is usually seen in um, while dealing to invert uh, V, S or vertical electric sanding measurements uh, in 2D. So uh, 
I may talk about uh, about this uh, in next session, especially when we're going to talk about the suitable selection or inverter parameters. Or a lot to talk about that. And the other parameters, using extended model or not, and the sensitivity model showing. And this is, for example, uh, shows the sensitivity of each block. So considering this, uh, you know, you see this gradual decrease towards depths, and uh, which is expected. But these, uh, you know, these blocks could be problem problematic, or you know, we have to check. And uh, it might be problematic to the modeling. So we can use generate model blocks, which is usually a good option. The type of IP options, not, I'm going to talk a lot about that. This is the display when we invert the model. We can show the inversion results in a separate window. The topography option, which is very important to note that um, while you're having topography, in your profile and you want to incorporate topography into inversion uh, it is important and it is vital to know that uh, if you have provided the topography in a separate list you should always display topography before you know going to inversion and least square inversion clicking so it is a, because if you do this the uh, data set uh, is inverted without incorporation of the topography. So I don't know whether it is right like this in the new versions, but in this version that I'm working with, uh, I should always, uh, you know, display topography, selecting the type of the topography, you know, removal because it in fact uses the, uh, uh, you know, the relative numbers not the absolute uh, elevations in the modeling process and how do you want to damp it or you want to how do you want to transform or distort your fine and element grids so uh, I'm not going to talk about that so before inversion if you have topography it is always important to display topography and select these topographic parameters before clicking on the inversion and when you are just done with these kind of configurations and you are all ready to do the inversion you will click on inversion and list squares inversion you will click on that I'm not going to click on that because it takes some time and I'm going to if you just click it uh, the inversion process starts and it takes several minutes or maybe uh, several hours if you're working with 3D inversions it is 2D but in the case of 3D data sets it takes much more time so it depends all on your data and uh, when the inversion is done the display button uh, menu will be shown automatically but we, as we are not going to you know select this the display uh, you should uh, display you click on display and show inversion results if you have you know uh, inverted your data file previously and you just want to show it in the SUD mode once again you should open the SUD im go to display and show inversion results and welcome to display sections window okay and I'm going to uh, in fact import my INV file the inversion results file and if you look at this, you will see again a description of my file. And the more important thing about this is the iteration number and the RMS errors. The first one is related to resistivity, and the second one is related to the induced polarization or IP or chargeability. So, uh, one point to notice is here the RMS should uh, follow a uh, decrease trend and you it will all usually do but sometimes it is possible that the uh, and the best inversion is uh, the one with the least RMS square error root mean square error or RMS error uh, and which is here about 5.54 or 5.65 why? Because it is sometimes possible that the RMS error, when you're working with IP uh, data, sometimes the RMS error of your resistivity is not very uh, 
different, but the IP RMS error is really different from each other. For example, if it is, for example, here if we have, uh, for example, 0.68, and in here, for example, if we have 0. Uh, for example, 1.1, uh, then this iteration will be our final final selection and will be our suitable model for interpretations. So the selection of the iteration number is important. Uh, and uh, it is the least RMS error, but if you're working with IP data, it should always be checked with uh, IP together. But uh, you know, the RMS error of resistivity is much more important uh, with respect to the RMS error of IP because the IP model is constructed based on resistivity model. And one point in here to notice. One point which is essential to notice, in fact, is that the RMS error is not uh, indicative of the model reliability uh, because of the non-uniqueness problem in geophysics. There are a lot of models that could fit our data and if uh, you want to check it, uh, whether it is good or not, for example, if you're having a data set with uh, uh, 10 meters of unit electrode spacings, try inversion in inverting it with two meter or two and a half meter unit electrode spacing and you will see that the RMS errors will decrease dramatically but the models will be distorted dramatically as well so um, it is usually stated that the RMS error should be relatively equivalent to the error in the field but in fact we don't know how much error we have in the field so it's usually up to you to understand whether your model is reliable or not. There are several ways to do it. I'm going to describe it in the next videos. And um, whenever we check these, you know, criteria, and we know that our model could be reliable, and we have done all of our best to, you know, avoid any artifacts in our model, then we will be sure that the RMS model, with, for example, 10% or less than 10%, will be usually okay. Okay, I talked a lot. Let's display our model. In the display menu, you see in the uh, okay in the display section, you can display the model and the data, and asks you about the uh, counter values and the options. I just you know skip because I used the uh, on you know general array. There is no type of uh, sort of section displayed in here. And the final uh, resistivity and the RMS5 uh, with the RMS5.5 for the resistivity is, looks like this. So I usually want to have IP together with resistivity. So I go to display section, choose a CD or IP, and I usually do want to have topography in my model. So let's display them. Just, I uh, just don't talk about the uh, options so much so this is the model that we get and this is resistivity and this is IP and uh, there are a lot of things to talk the suitable uh, selection of the uh, color scale uh, which is dependent on your uh, in fact target what you want to highlight in your interpretations and what is your target and it is usually based on that but usually usually it should follow the intrinsic characteristic of your uh, physical parameter for example resistivity is extremely variable with logarithmic variations uh, from t 10 with the power of negative I don't know 10 maybe to 10 power of positive 10 so for different materials. So usually the logarithmic interval as shown in here is suitable for resistivity. You can adjust it to gain a better representation. So you know the nature of the variations and then the nature of the chiral scale selection is usually logarithmic for resistivity. But in the case of IP, because IP is somehow linearly uh, is a linear, you know parameter is from for example 0 to I don't know maybe 100 million per volt in very extreme cases or maybe even higher some uh, you know spec uh, special conditions 
So in here you see that the IP is is not very good in representation of the car. So if we choose some kind of a linear scale, we will have a lot of a better representation. So let me display the model again. I'm going to click on logarithmic interval for resistivity and for the IP I will choose uh, linear colors. So let's check it out. And you will see it is much more better. It is much more you know sensible when we use this. Okay. After displaying your model with topography, you have the option to, you know, uh, save the inverted file data in XYZ format, in surfer format, uh, or in loan format. I haven't worked with this one. And if you want, for example, saving in surfer format, you will click and you will you know select the ones that you're interested in and click on okay okay in the change display sections there are the options for scales or the vertical scale is it if, uh, for example similar or different from the horizontal one and which what one thing one thing which is uh, amazing and good is the edit data and the rms error statistics and you will see in uh, in my case in my data set mm, 404 uh, 407 sorry 407 data points had lower than 10 percent and even f i think five percent of uh error when compared to the you know forward modeling tests uh, compared with field tests so it shows that my data is extremely good in quality and there are some data if and if you just move this a thin green line and you will see for example in here I have one data point with 75% uh, difference with what uh, would be measured according to the uh, forward modeling tests so we can use this option to remove some of our noisy data points uh, and I will talk about them more in the next session so it was just a very quick introduction into us to the uh, in software and in next session I'm going to describe a little bit more about this uh, uh, you know uh, the inversion procedures and how to select this uh, suitable inversion parameters to gain a realistic model thank you if you uh, enjoyed this video or other videos in our channel please uh, let us know uh, by like or uh, subscribe to our channel if you're interested in our videos or any vid new videos that we create you will be noticed you and uh, I hope you have a good day today